Joe Macron. He's a resident fellow at the Arab Center and he's in uh, Washington, D.C. Joe, appreciate your time um, on what's uh, turning to, to be out to be a very busy uh, and uh, hopefully not deadly afternoon uh, in occupied East Jerusalem. Okay. From what we've seen over the last few days, are you surprised that it's reached this level of violence just in the last two days? Okay, okay. Uh, part of it is is linked, I think, to Netanyahu's own calculation now. He has his own political uh, uh, complications in, in who's going to run the ne next government. I think this is part of diversion to building up his, uh, his coalition at home. Uh, part of it is his complex relation, obviously, with the, with the Biden administration. Uh, they are at odds on the Iran nuclear uh, deal, and uh, now we see that the U.S. is unable, the Biden administration is unable to basically pressure to contain the situation. And part of it is obviously the existing dynamics of the conflict. Uh, since Trump's uh, decision on Jerusalem, uh, this has been also a source of tension, this, uh, this city, for, for, for decades and decades. So it's not surprising the, the provocation of the Israeli decision in that sense. Uh, and there's also the calculation on the Palestinian side, the election. Also, this is going to help them somehow, the Palestinian Authority, to divert attention from uh, from the need to hold this election at some point. Uh, so, so I think all those factors are are are, are leading up, I think, uh, uh, to this peak moment today. Uh, and uh, Joe, you know, when we talk about uh, the U.S. involvement for so many years, especially under the Trump administration, it was clearly very pro-Israel, pro-Netanyahu. But um, the Biden Biden ran his campaign on human rights, and uh, since taking office, he has spoken out against human rights in various parts of the world. So, doesn't it feel almost hypocritical? for him now not to say anything about uh, what's happening in occupied East Jerusalem, especially when we've seen some of those visuals of that violent crackdown on, on people simply just praying uh, during one of, during the holiest time uh, for Muslims. I mean, in general, uh, human rights and uh, real politics, they always clash at, uh, at some point. So there's always the interest of, of, of the state uh, uh, concerned. This is in general. Second, uh, the Biden administration is now in a very difficult situation. First, you have the left, uh, the left wing of the party is pressuring to take a position in that sense. And at the same time, he doesn't want to have an open public confrontation with, uh, with Netanyahu, as Obama did a few years ago during his term. Uh, and they also, they already have a complicated relation on the Iran nuclear deal. And the Biden is focused now on the Iran nuclear deal. So they already sent them three messages from Washington to Netanyahu. There was a report today that uh, uh, Netanyahu, uh, the government asked Biden not to intervene on, on this issue. So they are trying to basically work behind the scenes to try to, to, to mitigate any, any potential uh, uh, escalation or more further escalation on the ground. Uh, but I don't see we're going to see a public uh, uh, feud in that sense, uh, because I think both sides are not interested in, uh, uh, in this fight now. Um, and, and Joe, in your opinion, do you think we're now headed towards a third intifada? I mean, there are potential, definitely, uh, for that. We, we have a lack of Palestinian leadership. You see the Palestinians are, are, are taking this move. Uh, uh, we have to see. Uh, it might not be the same, uh, uh, the same scenario or the same uh, uh, circumstances of, of, the, of, of the previous, uh, the last, latest intifada, the last one. Uh, but definitely, I think people. But we have to take into into con consideration. Uh, we have the the uh, corona uh, coronavirus. We have also the uh, situation on the ground. It's more complicated. Israeli is more also uh, ready to take actions. We are seeing Hamas now basically taking the pressure, uh, sending some threats that might also change the dynamics. Uh, it's hard to predict. I mean, this is why you have a leaderless movement at this point, trying to uh, to, to move this forward. Uh, but uh, it might be it might be a recurring pattern, but I don't think the same circumstances of the last intifada. Joe Macaron, appreciate uh, your analysis live to us there from Washington.